welcome back to another great episode of Stove Top Yum Yum. Today we're making a delicious, beautiful French ham and cheese sandwich called a croque madame because we're going to use a fried egg on top. You guys, this is so easy. This is probably the best ham and cheese sandwich you'll ever have and it's so easy to make. So we're going to start with the ingredients. Let's go check them out. I'm going to point the ingredients out. Okay, guys, so we have, I have brioche bread that I've toasted. You can toast it as much as you want, or just, we, I like to make it nice and toasted. I have one a little bit less I wanted to show you. Depends on how you like it, but it makes our bread very sturdy to hold up to our ingredients. makes it very sturdy. I have some butter we're going to slather on one side of each bread. I have a tablespoon of unsweet, excuse me, unsalted butter. I have a cup and a quarter of milk because I'm going to make three sandwiches. We're going to make a classic bechamel sauce. Now it's a French, it's a base sauce and it's called a bechamel sauce and that the French consider that a sauce within a sauce within a sauce. What I mean by that is that's the base that you use for Alfredo sauce, for nacho cheese sauce and all types of sauces, your bechamel. So we're going to start with our roux, which I have the flour uh, behind me here, excuse me, in front of me here. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to grab a tablespoon of AP flour, all-purpose flour, and get our roux going. I've got some mustard, some yellow mustard. You can use uh, whole grain mustard if you'd like. The French do that. I have yellow mustard on hand. That's fine. I have about a cup and a half of fresh Gruyere cheese, which is a Swiss cheese. It melts so beautiful, and it is in the Swiss cheese family. It's just higher, uh, better quality than Swiss cheese. And with this sandwich, guys, we don't want to use regular Swiss cheese. You want to get yourself Gruyere cheese. We're also going to use four slices of Black Forest ham in each sandwich. So, you guys, this is cool, you guys. When I come back, I'll be here at the stove, and let's get cooking. Guys, just for one second, as part of our ingredients, which I missed... We're also going to use up to a quarter teaspoon of fresh thyme. We'll take it off the sprig. And I've got some beautiful fresh nutmeg. About a quarter of a teaspoon I'm going to use with my little hydroplane. Okay, guys, I'm back. We're at the stove. I'm melting my tablespoon of butter. I'm going to add my flour. A tablespoon of flour. I'm going to make a typical bechamel. This is a roux, actually. This is a, a, the thickening agent for your sauce. Your bechamel sauce, excuse me, your bechamel sauce is a milk-based sauce. So once our sauce is nice and thick, we're also going to add some salt and pepper to taste, about a teaspoon. Once our sauce is ready, we will add our thyme and our nutmeg once our sauce is done. So this should cook in about three to four minutes. Once you don't smell the flour smell anymore, your sauce is done. So like I mentioned before, guys, the reason why I go ahead, you can put your bread, you can use country bread, you can use um, brioche. You don't want to use sandwich bread. That's going to be way too uh, unsturdy for this. So what I'm going to do is I toast it so we can have a nice, okay, look at this, guys. Check that out. You see that? All right, so I'm going to start adding the milk slowly. Add it slowly, guys. We're adding it slowly. You see that? Once we start making our roux, make sure your uh, make sure the stove is on two above medium, like a high low. Okay. Keep adding more milk. Adding our milk. Oops. Remember, guys, when you're making a roux, uh, like in this case, a, a base, a bechamel base, which is a French, it's a French, uh, it's named bechamel. It's a French term for it, for your base sauce. Always remember that your sauce needs to come to a boil, but you got to be really careful because we have fat in this milk. So you got to be really careful. You don't want it to overflow or come you need for it to boil in order for it to thick. I say it all the time. Thick, and we're going to add our salt and pepper, our nutmeg, and our thyme. We're also going to add 
about a quarter cup of our Gruyere cheese to the sauce. Yum, this is so yum, you guys. The way you know your sauce is thick enough, your base is the back of your spoon. When you can coat the back of your spoon, okay? So now we're going to turn the heat off. I'm turning the heat off because we don't want this to overboil. Let me show you. Okay, so now we're going to add our beautiful, fresh Gruyere cheese. Oh, about a quarter cup. Just about a little bit. Yeah, about a now we're going to grab our thyme. We're going to grab our sprigs of thyme, guys. And we're going to go, you always go backwards. On, you can get the top one, put it in, and you go backwards on your, on your thyme. Sometimes it's really soft, and that's fine. You just have to be a little patient. When you have it in the cold, it gets kind of soft, so it's no biggie. See that? See that? Look at that. Okay, guys, now we're going to grab the nutmeg. Our hydroplane. We've got a teaspoon of nutmeg. Look at that. Be careful, guys. Nutmeg is very potent. And watch your fingers with this hydroplane. So we're going to do about a quarter teaspoon. I apologize, not a teaspoon. Very, very potent, very powerful. So we're going to do about a quarter. You can use, of course, ground nutmeg. That's fine. But I want it to be a little fancy for you guys today. So look at that. That nutmeg just brings out that, ugh, that cheese taste. It's so, it's it's kind of like uh, the nutmeg is kind of like that taste in your sauce. That you're gonna go, oh my god, what is that? That's what nutmeg does. And for those of you that have cooked with nutmeg before, you know what I'm talking about. I said you can toast as much or as little you want your bread, but we do need it to be sturdy. So I have some unsalted butter here. We're gonna put on one side of our toast. And we're going to turn it this way, only on one. And then on the opposite side, on, on top, right here, we're going to put some mustard. Like I said, uh, the French use whole grain mustard. I, I'm, I have yellow mustard on hand, so that's fine. You can use it. You can use whole grain mustard. I mean, that's fine. That's what I happen to have on hand. So Now we're going to grab our mustard. So, our oven is at 400 right now, guys. So, what we're going to do right now is we're going to put our oven on broil. We're going to broil this for three to five minutes. So, I'm putting it all the way up on broil. There we go. And it's going to broil for three to five minutes. Check this out. All right, let me do this. Cause, all right, we're going to do a little bit of mustard. Just a twirl mustard. We're going to grab our ham, four slices of ham on each, four slices, two, three, look how simple this is you guys, isn't this simple, three, and four, you guys follow me so far, and four, so we're going to do that on the other one, put up our greer on top of our ham, which seems crazy, but the reason why I, you see a wire on my uh, cookie sheet is because I don't, I, I feel the sauce when I make the sauce. If you use a wire, it's even better if you use uh, a little wire rack because to me, the bread gets soggy on the bottom when you soak it. When you pour the bread on, it'll get soggy if it's just sitting in the cookie sheet. So that's why it'll just drip down. So we're covering one, we're going to cover one. We're going to cover the second one. Here's the butter on top. I'll cover the third one. Now comes the fun part, you guys. Now, oh my god, I'm so hungry. Now comes the fun part, guys. Now we're going to grab our beautiful, I believe it's called a Monray, uh, Monray or Monet sauce or something, but it's a bechamel the way we did it, very easy. And we're going to slather it on. I mean, perfect. Now, guys, we're going to get some more greer on top. Oh, my God. This is incredible, you guys. Oh, my goodness gracious. This is so incredible. You can never have too much greer cheese. So, <laughs> I always say that. So, we came by like about maybe, uh, probably about a cup of greer. A cup and a little bit. 
I have a six ounce bar that I just uh, shredded. So check this out, guys. Let me grab my thing. It's kind of warm. Let me show you something real quick. Hang on. All right. Check that out. Look at the bottom. See how it's dripping to the bottom? That will avoid any sogginess. So our oven is on broil right now. So we're going to broil for three to five minutes. What I do when I broil, guys, is I normally keep my oven semi-open. This is for probably three to five minutes we're going to broil. I'll, I'll keep it open like that just to check. So remember, this is your tip, very easy, uh, typical French ham and cheese sandwich that is so versatile you can have it for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And remember, this is a fork and knife sandwich. You do not eat this with your hands, okay? So when I come back, guys, I'm going to have my nonstick pan on there. We're going to throw our beautiful sunny side up eggs on there to put on top of our croque madame is why it's called that because of the egg and you guys you don't want to miss this. this is so beautiful and so yum yum be right back start getting nervous and those of you that know me already all right so we're getting our little egg nice and fried a little sunny side up egg our croque madame is almost done look how easy that was that wasn't that easy Oh, I love it. I'm actually going to be making this live on my show tomorrow, my segment at 1030 on the Sunny Von Cleveland, the morning brew. Guys, you don't want to miss these guys. These guys are young. They're positive. They're, it's incredible. They have incredible articles they talk about, incredible guests on the show. Tomorrow they have uh, Mr. Farrell's coming on from Farrell International. Guys, a Guinness Book World Record in memory. Guys, a genius, so... Incredible, you'll love it. Grab our first croque madame. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna put it on my bamboo. We're gonna plate it on my bamboo plate. Look at that. Look at this, you guys. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Whew. Gorgeous. Now I'm going to move all this out of the way so my sandwich doesn't end up on the floor. I'm gonna grab my egg, my beautiful, beautiful egg. Okay, be kind to me now, honey. Be kind to mama, okay? We don't want you to break now. That's the whole beauty of it, so. Hey, guys, I'm back and we're ready to taste. Oh, my God. Check this beauty out. Look at this. Look at this croque, madame. You can have this for breakfast, for lunch, for brunch. Now take a bite. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, this is beautiful. All right. Oh, look at all that eggy goodness. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Here it goes. Down the hatch. Down the hatch. Here it goes. Oh, Mary, Mother of God. Oh my god. Oh my god. You guys, oh, how easy was that? The saltiness of the ham with that beautiful, that beautiful melty cheese with that bechamel sauce. And you get that pop from the nutmeg. And then you have that runniness of the egg. Dear God, I'm going to try this again. Just in case. I got my little piece. My husband doesn't know what he's missing, but that's okay. I'll eat it for him, so. Here goes another bite. Look at the size of this bite. See how sturdy the bread is? Look how sturdy the bread is when you toast it. Smart. Good. Make it nice and sturdy. Mm. mustard it's just perfect mm, that's just what the sandwich needed so all the ingredients combined are just perfect the earthiness of that time you guys have to try this and let me know what you think it's off the chain delicious you guys remember it was so easy when making a ham and cheese sandwich the quick bechamel 
with the Gruyere cheese. Remember, guys, don't skim on the cheese. Buy Gruyere cheese. I buy the Swiss kind. You can get it anywhere. Walmart, Publix, wherever you want to get it. But always remember, you guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And, if you've, and don't forget to comment. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. If not, smash that subscribe button and don't forget the bell so you don't miss any episodes. Excuse me. And as always, my two main ingredients... And every dish that I create are passion and love. With those two ingredients, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what your kitchen looks like, where you come from. If you incorporate those two ingredients, your recipe will not fail. I promise you that. I repeat, it will not fail, guys. And as always, you guys, au revoir, los quiero. I love you. And as the French would say, Voila, we did it, you guys. Until the next great episode of Stove Top Yum Yum, I will be back and I'll see you guys then. Take great care, guys. Bye.